In this episode, tragedy strikes the Howe family for the second time in less than a decade. In the mid-1800s, a young boy was paddling with his family servant along Australia's eastern coastline in ankle-deep water. He is snatched by a shark with little thought for his safety. The boy's servant dives into the water after. But will he be able to save the young boys? It was Wednesday, January 17, 1830. A young boy patriotically named Alfred Australia. Howe was visiting a beach on Australia's east coast. The beach was at Trial Bay where the Maclay River runs into the sea, situated roughly midway between Brisbane and Sydney. The bay is a popular tourist destination today. Its turquoise-sheltered waters offer excellent swimming and gentle swells for beginner surfers. Alfred had already lost his father in a tragic accident eight years before this incident had also involved the Australian waters when Alfred was only four years old. He and his father had been on a boat in Sydney Harbour for unknown reasons. The boat capsized when the pair were trying to board another. Alfred's father George Howell had swung after Alfred and managed to push him towards the safety of a nearby craft. Although he heroically saved his son, George Howell, owner of the Sydney Gazette newspaper, sadly drowned that day. He left behind his wife and their three children, including the young Alfred. Despite this family tragedy, Alfred was not dissuaded from the living so close to the coast. His childhood was full of seaside visits and splashing in the warm waters off the Australian coast. On this particular day, he had walked along the beach talking to the family servant. He had played in the sand. When they came to where the Maclay River ran into the sea, the flow of the river turned up. The sandy muddy bottom gives the water a slight mur. Alfred paddled into the fresh current to wash the sand from his feet. Unknown to him, he was being watched by an underwater predator. The water gently ran over his toes in the ankle, deep river. He splashed and shook his feet slightly. Alfred looked down at them watching as the sand was washed away. Then suddenly something burst out. In an instant, a large shark grabbed Alfred by the legs. It thrashed its head from side to side. As it pulled Alfred's feet from under him, he fell backward, yelling out in alarm. Are you already immersed in the story? Consider subscribing quickly to help us out. The shark dragged the boy into the river and out towards the open ocean. Alfred could barely breathe as he tried to hold his head up above the water. The speed of the shark was incredible. The power of its jaws was immense. Alfred tried desperately to free his legs from the shark's almighty, but it was too powerful. He managed to grab hold of Alfred's hands. He pulled and he was determined not to let go. The boy was screaming. The shark was thrashing around, but mercifully, as the shark readjusted its grip on the boy, it momentarily released him. That was all that was needed. The servant managed to pull Alfred away. As he tugged the youngster, they fell back into the river, only feet from the sand. Onlookers had run towards the commotion. Some of them began screaming at the two in the water. To their horror, the shark had done a U-turn in the sea and was now torpedoing back toward them. It began chasing them up the river. The servant picked up Alfred and ran to the shore. He escaped the water just in time. When he lay Alfred on the sand, the boy was still conscious, but he was bleeding heavily. The people on the beach who had witnessed the terrifying attack and the heroic saved by the servant quickly rushed to his aid. They grabbed clothing and made makeshift tourniquets. They tied them tightly around Alfred's legs to stem the bleeding. According to witnesses, this had the desired effect and the blood flow from Alfred's gaping wounds was greatly reduced. He had lost a large chunk of flesh from the calf in one of his legs. Alfred began drifting in and out of consciousness as he was rushed to the it is not known what condition he was in when he arrived at the hospital after being stitched up and assessed. The surgeon ordered him to be transferred to a hospital in the coastal town of Port Macquarie south of Trial Bay. There, he was prepared for the amputation of one of his legs. Sadly, just three days after the attack, Alfred died from tetanus before they could. The clostridium taut bacteria responsible for causing tetanus had spread throughout Alfred's body. His nervous system was attacked and shut down. Even today, there is no known cure, but symptoms are managed and people are vaccinated. Alfred Howell may have survived his injuries if modern-day medicine had been available today. Sadly, Alfred Howell wasn't so lucky. It would be more than 120 years before the next recorded shark attack in Trial Bay. This time in 1961, the shark attack was provoked. Two spear fishermen, John Davy and John Pierpoint, injured a 1.4-meter wabigong shark, which then spun around and bit the men on the legs and ankles. The shark was killed by his friends. The attack on Alfred was unprovoked, but it could have been prevented. Since the 1,800 seconds, there has been a huge amount of education about sharks. More recently, they are important animals in the ocean's ecosystems and are to be respected. The shark that attacked Stefan was likely hunting at the time, particularly given that the day was drawing to a close and dusk was setting in. Alfred seemed unaware of the dangers of entering the shallow waters at dusk and had been in the wrong place at the wrong time. In 2022, there were 12 unprovoked shark attacks in Australia's waters. Three of these proved. Knowing the dangers and understanding the behavior of sharks can go a long way to avoiding being bitten. The Howe family had suffered that decade after losing her husband. Miss Howe now lost her young son and was left with two daughters to raise alone. 
Since then, there has been massive development in shark safety technology, but whenever we enter the water in shark territory. Thanks everyone for listening to this story. If you enjoyed it, please let us know by subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. See you in the next story.